industry, we spent a huge amount of time thinking about the internal changes that the move to SDN and NFE, the new IP, will bring. But we haven't spent very much time thinking about what it means to end users and customers. So unlike the move to LTE, unlike uh, the move to broadband networks, this has today been mostly an internal discussion around how we can improve the efficiency and agility of service providers. But going forward, of course, there has to be some impact and benefit to end users. So um, our customer advisory board um, basically kind of got together and said, well, we can't migrate customers to these new services unless there's a compelling reason and benefit to do that. And so we'd better come up with some reasons why they would want to migrate. Um, and we did. Uh, and it turns out those reasons are really compelling, um, which kind of come back to the kind of mantra of the new IP around service agility, around flexibility, around instantaneously being able to do new things. Um, but one of the most important aspects um, that we kind of thought about as a group and then tested with um, service providers and, and enterprises was this idea that every customer could get their own network. And that became really compelling because in this new environment, essentially, we can give virtual resources, virtual routers, virtual firewalls, virtual equipment to an enterprise, be, it, be they large or small, and have them basically manage through web interfaces and portals their own services as if it were their own complete private network. Um, and we haven't been able to do that since the days when you built or bought lease lines and you created your own network by yourself. Uh, and so we've kind of been able to kind of go back in time and give that flexibility to customers, which simply isn't available with the, you know, the, the MPLS or IP networks that are, that are around today. Um, so that became a, a kind of first aspect of this. And if you think going through that then, the new network that you create with this really is, is borderless. There is no edge to this because at every location, it's your own network. Is the firewall in the cloud? Is it on-premise? Uh, is the router here or there where, where our services are being delivered? It doesn't really matter. It's an end-to-end -end service delivery mechanism that binds what enterprises do with their private clouds or their campuses together with what the service provider delivers as a kind of end-to-end -end service. So from a agility perspective, from a customer perspective then, being able to go into a service and be able to change it yourself brings the agility not just to the service provider, but to the enterprise as well. And so from an enterprise management perspective, I now need to change their firewall rule, or I need to put some new security software in. Doing that in the traditional sense would be really hard, getting the service provider to do it for you, almost impossible. But now we've given virtual resources to that enterprise customer. That enterprise customer themselves can make those changes. Um, and rather than handle or hand them a, a CLI, a command line interface to do something, we give them a web portal and interface. And by doing that, we also abstract the complexity of the underlying equipment. And it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's a piece of brocade software or hardware, whether it's somebody else, the service looks the same to the enterprise customer. It's managed in a common, coherent format. And changing a firewall rule is as simple as going to a website with the right credentials, making that change and have it propagated down. Loading a new piece of security software happens the same way. So these virtual resources are now allocated to enterprise customers to do the network job. And now we can bring the enterprise cloud together with the service provider cloud. So once you've done that then, the resources, whether they happen on premise in a customer site or in the cloud, becomes irrelevant. You put the workload and the rules and the security software and the routing, wherever it makes sense to deliver the end-to-end -end connectivity that that uh, enterprise customer needs. And that's really the power of the new IP as it gets applied to enterprise customers.